Hi, this is Joe from Brain Buffet. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to effectively edit clips that are already on your timeline. I'm using an example from my Brain Buffet course on Premiere Pro, which I created to prepare students for their Adobe Certified Associate exam. Okay, now let's talk about how you edit here on the timeline. There's a, a bunch of tools here on the toolbar to do that. So let's start with just the selection tool that we've been using. It's the arrow tool. We haven't actually changed to any tool. So it's the tool that we've been using. And let's go here to the end of our timeline. So I'm going to zoom in here to this last clip. And so I can show you what I want to do. So if you put your cursor at the end of a clip and it doesn't have to be selected, you just put your cursor at the end, either the beginning or the end, you'll see that you're, you're cursor turns into this red arrow and that tells you that you're going to trim off part of your clip. So if I click and drag here, that clip is now shorter. We've gotten rid of some of the video. The cool thing about Premiere is it's non-destructive. If I want to bring that video back, I can just click and drag. And in fact, I can bring them back more than was there originally. Remember we had trimmed some off here in the source monitor. So now I'm trimming basically. If you trim and you leave a gap, gaps are not usually something that you want. How do you get rid of a gap? Well, you can drag your clips back and forth so I can move this clip down and get rid of that. Notice how when I get close, it kind of snaps to that. That's because I have snapped turned on and snap is a function of the sequence menu. So I pretty much always, always have snap turned on. Notice that linked selection, we talked about that earlier. That's actually one of these buttons here too. Snap is this button right here. So if you notice that the little magnet -y looking icon is turned off, that means snap is turned off. And when I get here, see how it's not snapping to there? So I always run with snap on. Another way to get rid of gaps, and this is usually the way I do it, is you can right click on a gap and hit ripple delete. Anytime you have a gap, that's how you do it. Let me undo that just so I can show you another cool feature in that's new in Premiere, the, this latest version. So now let's say I have two or three, four different gaps. I've been trimming stuff and I just want to get rid of all those gaps. They, I guess you need to select these clips. So I'm going to do a control A that selects everything. And then if I come up here to sequence and close gap, boom, it closed all of them at once. So that's new. I'm very excited about that new feature. So that was the selection tool. We have a couple other tools to, to work with. We're going to jump over the track selection and get right here to the ripple edit. So ripple edit is a cool one. If I grab this, I want you to notice the, the end. So I'm going to hit the arrow uh, down to go to the very end. So we're at 226, 2226. So let's say I I want to make my whole project shorter and I want to get rid of that time by taking a little bit of the time off the flower one. I'm going to grab the ripple and what happens with a ripple is the change that I make here. See, I'm going to make this shorter and notice that it's yellow this time because it's the ripple. Notice how the entire project got shorter. Now, if I hit end, we're no longer at 2226, we're at 2202. So the ripple, if you make a change anywhere, let's say I make a change here, I'm going to make this one shorter. The entire project ripples down or uh, adjusts with it. So that can be really handy. The ripple tool allows you to make an edit and everything to the right changes. Click and hold on this tool and you'll notice that there's three other tools underneath it. So any of these tools that have little tiny arrows, that means there's nested tools like there's no nested tool underneath the razor tool, but there is one underneath the, the ripple and it's called the rolling edit tool. The rolling edit tool allows you to adjust a cut and it does not affect the overall length. So let me go back to the end of my project here. And let's say I want to adjust where this cut is. I'll slide this cut over and notice how the symbol changes to a double headed red arrow or red symbol. And notice that the overall length did not change. So in fact, let's go to, I don't know, 23 seconds. I'll make this go to 23 seconds. Exactly. We'll change where this cut is. And if we go to the end now, it's still exactly at 23 seconds. So this allows you to change where a cut happens 
without changing the overall length of your project. So practice the ripple and the rolling edit tools. Those are two really important tools. The razor blade tool, let's try that. So let's say I have a long clip here and I just want to cut it in half. You can grab the razor tool and cut. And now that is two separate clips. See how it's one clip here and another clip there. I rarely use the razor tool, but sometimes you want to cut something in half and the razor tool is a great way to do that. And then let's go ahead and let's see. I'm going to zoom into my yellow flower here. Now the last two primary tools for editing on the timeline are the slip tool and the slide tool. So the slip tool allows you to take a clip and just slip it within this window. So notice how river on one side, river close up and river wide shot are not going to change. If I click and drag this, neither of those clips are changing. And up here in my program monitor, you can see the in and the out points, those numbers are changing. Now the slide is the opposite. The yellow flower isn't going to change, but when I click and drag here, you notice down on the timeline, the two river clips are changing they're getting longer or shorter. And when I drag it, see a yellow flower is in a different spot. I'll drag it and see it's over here or it's over here. So the slide tool keeps the clip that you're adjusting the same and just changes the clips on either side versus the slip tool doesn't change either the clips on either side. It just changes the clip in the middle. So those are the basic editing tools. And what I'd like you to do now is practice. What I want you to do right now is make sure that you have enough clips that it looks good. So make sure that they're in a, a sequence that you like, that you think looks really nice and that covers up all of the music. So your timeline should look like mine. We should have our voice over here in the middle. We should have our music that goes throughout the entire project. And we should have five to six, seven, eight clips. And they should, when all totaled up, make the same length as the music. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching. Click the link in the description below to explore more free online professional development. And click the link on screen to subscribe to the channel for more videos.